everyone, welcome to the Impulse RC uh, YouTube channel. I'm Onigiri, uh, this is my house, and today we're going to talk about the Impulse OSD. If you don't know about the Impulse OSD yet, it comes on two boards. The Impulse RC Wolf PDB or the Impulse OSD Apex board. Basically, these two boards bring up an OSD on your FPV feed if your flight controller doesn't have this option integrated already. So whether you're using the Wolf PDB or the Impulse OSD board, once you have wired everything, you should be able to bring up um, on your FPV feed this kind of menu. So today's video is simply going to be um, about going through this menu, uh, nothing really specific yet. I'm planning to do a series of videos where I will go more into details um, into some features such as, you know, the VTX, the battery, the setup menu. But today we're just going to go through this main menu. This video is made for uh, people who are fairly new to uh, FPV and uh, using this OSD. So we're going to keep it very simple today and yeah, let's get started. So the first thing to know about our OSD is that it's compatible with um, Kissflight Wino, Fetec and Beta Flight uh, flight controller. Uh, all you have to do is wire them and it will recognize what type of flight controller you're wiring it to and then it will be able to speak to your flight controller, your VTX, you know, um, your camera, uh, as long as all the wiring is correct. And then you should be able to speak to these components through um, that menu that we just brought up. So if you're looking at this main menu, you can already see um, sections and options that you are used to. And you can see that you can speak to the flight controller. So that will be the tune rates and filters options. You can talk to your VTX, to your camera with cam control, and then you can refine the setup of your impulse OS and you can also adjust some battery um, options. So if you go in the tune menu, it will be nothing different than what you um, can change from your computer, except that with this, you can do it on the field if needed. Um, you can tune your roll pitch, your, and then is the usual option. So the TPA option is something that is also KISS GUI related. If you have um, an access to your GUI and you usually fiddle with your TPA option in there, that's exactly the same. If you're familiar with tuning your quad, you can also adjust the set point weight to the percentage that uh, you want. You have the RTH return to home option that is compatible with the feature that our main Alex is developing at the moment. I will put a link in the description to his Patreon and uh, you can have a look at all this if you feel like having a return to home option on your drone which can be uh, very useful in certain situations. So if we're back to the main menu you also have an access to your rates again like you would in the normal software on your computer that's where you adjust your rates for roll pitch and your that's your preferences in terms of flying your drone how twitchy how uh, responsive you need it to be compared with your inputs so you can um, do this through our OSD. If we go back to the main menu again, you can access the filters. Since we have the adaptive filters this day, no one messes around with it. I personally never really had to. <laughs> and I started FPV in 2017. I didn't really have to, um, to mess up with the filters, but if you're someone who wants to, that's also the option. You know, you can go in there and you have all these options that you can tweak, just like you would in your software. So now going to the VTX menu, this is uh, a topic that I would like to dedicate a full video about because I don't want all these videos to be too long. That's what you would pretty much uh, change on your software at home before going to fly or um, that's what you would change um, on site by opening your drone and, and manually pressing buttons and changing um, the settings of your VTX, looking at the LEDs code, all these things you would do manually, you can do them through the OSD. But because I want to go um, more into detail in the advanced options, um, we'll keep that for another video. So far you can see it's the, the usual things. You, you can uh, change the power, you can change your band and your channel. I always use it when I fly with people because I try to always have the same channel. But if for once you have someone who just arrived in your, in your group of people and is on the same channel as you, it's a quick change and it's very convenient. So uh, again, we'll talk about this, uh, just the VTX menu in another video. So for now, we can go back to the main menu. And now we're reaching the battery menu, which is also something I would like to talk about in a full video. But if we quickly enter it, you can have a look already. Pretty much this menu will help you tweaking a lot of features for your batteries. Uh, in terms of battery warning when you're flying. You can set it all up so that you have the, the right warnings at the right time. You don't have to always check um, how much milliamp you have used, all these kind of things. You can just set it up, 
And when it's time to land, the OSD will let you know that it's time for you to land. Otherwise, you know, flat battery, no one wants this. So this is a cool feature as well, but I'd rather talk about this full battery menu in a, a specific isolated video. So now back to the main menu and we're going into cam control. This is pretty much the option that replaces the fact that you needed to connect a controller to your camera. It's always a tricky place and if you need to access your camera with a controller to change you know the white balance because it's off or if uh, suddenly you want to fly at night and you want to change also the setting before OSDs you would have to open the drone, connect a small controller and press on buttons. Now you can uh, pretty much just access your camera through the OSD and um, again that saves a lot of time and it's a lot convenient when you need to do changes on site. So that's it for camera control feature. We're back to the main menu one last time. We can go into the setup section of our OSD. We'll cover the full menu in another video as well but for now um, just know that it's uh, where you can change basic setup of the OSD so you can change you know uh, the language, the unit measure, tell the system which uh, goggles you're using. You can set the items that you want displayed on your OSD. You can move, you know, uh, them around on your screen like you would do in the software on your computer. Uh, and then, you know, if we go back to the setup menu, that's where we'll go more into details into the advanced display. Uh, for now, we can quickly have a look at how to uh, set up the call signs. If I'm entering mine and all I would have to do, uh, like I did when I recorded this DVR, was just using pitch and roll to send my name. So instead of having big bad, big bada, <laughs> we uh, just go and change it to uh, onigiri it's not necessary but you know when you fly with other people and uh, they're watching your feed at least they know who's flying so yeah back to the setup menu uh, we'll have a look at um, all the other options in another video but, but i think that's pretty much you know a good presentation already of what uh, our OSD can do. So I know this video was quite basic but I feel like we had to make it happen just to at least start the series about our OSD um, and also uh, it's a good opportunity for you to already ask questions that you have because you might already have questions on the basic stuff uh, so before we go into details Feel free to ask them in the comments. I will have a look at them with the team, with Alexander Wolf, who is developing the, the whole you know, firmware of our OSD. And uh, we'll answer them, like I said, in the next video. Thanks for watching this one. If you're not subscribed yet, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Uh, we're also on Facebook. We have our official page, Impulse RC, but also a Facebook group called Impulse RC Flyers Club. On the same topic, we also have a Discord chat. So I put the link in the description as well. And then you can find us on Instagram. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next video. Again, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.